Hey everyone, what we're going to be looking at is how to run a VPN on a Apple TV 4K or the third gen Apple TV. Those of you who have these devices, for whatever reason you might want to actually run a VPN, you will know that basically there is no way of actually installing a VPN directly on the device. So if you search for VPN on the Apple Store, um, you do not get any apps coming up. So there's no way of installing any VPN apps on the Apple TV itself. Um, now, there is a way that you can mess around with DNS uh, servers in order to unlock certain content. So basically, if you want to geo unlock geo-locked content, so for example, if you want to use Netflix from a different region, then you can do this using DNS servers. However, for people that literally just want to unblock so maybe their ISP, their internet service provider is actually blocking certain content for them. For those people, obviously they probably want to run a VPN. There's two ways of doing this. The simple way is basically you put a VPN on your main router in your house and then everything is behind a VPN. And basically any internet that you share within your house is then also behind the VPN. Now the problem with this method is like me, if you have HomeKit set up, then none of your devices will actually work for the simple reason that basically it's going to think that um, all of these devices will be connected to a completely different internet connection every single time. So for that reason, um, I wouldn't actually recommend going down that route unless it's something that you can temporarily just switch on and off. So various smart routers these days will have an option for installing OpenVPN clients. Now, the other way of doing it is a method that I'm going to show you in this video and that is um, using one of these. So this I actually teased a little while back and I wanted to actually do enough testing um, before I actually brought you a video on this. So essentially what this is, is um, it's a, I believe it's around 20 pounds, um, so probably around $20 uh, router off Amazon. And the reason this particular one is quite attractive is because it actually powers off USB. So essentially any device that you have that has a USB port on it, you can now connect this to. So because I actually have my Apple TV hardwired, I have it connected via e uh, an ethernet port. What I essentially do is I connect this in between my router and the Apple TV. Now that gives me two benefits. Firstly, um, it means that I can switch it on and off. So just on the, the picture here, you can see that it's got a little switch. So you actually have an option to, um, and you can use an app, app to do it as well. Um, you can use the, the web, web login. Um, but basically what you can do is on the physical device, you can literally just switch VPN on and off. So whenever you don't want the VPN, and obviously VPNs do come with downsides as well, so they will always slow down your connection, um, usually by at least half, if not more, and most of them will be a lot worse than that as well. Um, so obviously if you don't want any of those downsides and obviously if you've got home kit and things like that set up and you don't want it interfering with them, then what you want to essentially do is when you want to use your VPN, you switch this on and when you want it just your normal connection, then you just flick that switch and your VPN's disabled and it goes back to your normal internet connection. Now, as I say, I've been testing this for a little while and it is very, very simple to set up. So what I'll do is in a separate video, I'll actually give you a walkthrough um, because I don't want this particular video to drag on too long. Um, in this video, what I essentially want to do is just discuss the good points and the bad points of this particular method because every, every no matter which method you choose, they'll all have downsides as well. So the biggest downside that I've actually found with this particular router um, is the fact that any VPN client that you actually install on it, and it is very simple to actually ins install. Essentially, all you're doing, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just unplug it and I'll show you the physical device. Okay, so here we are with the actual physical router. So this is a, a mini router in, in essence. So what you have here is you have a power cable, which is just your micro SD. So this can literally be connected to any five volt um, USB connection. So literally on the back of your TV, um, I've powered it off my router, I've powered it off, off my NAS drive. Any, literally any USB source will power this. You could probably power this off a power bank. It's, it's, it's basically that low power usage. Um, you then have an input and an output. So basically that's your input. So that's coming from your router. Um, and I think that's the way 
around it is. And then local area network is basically going to your Apple TV or whatever device you want this connected to. On the front, um, as I say, you have a little reset button. Um, this is your switch for enabling or disabling your VPN. And then you have a little kind of opening there. Um, there's no actual fan inside there that actually spins up. Um, and that's it. Basically, it's, it's that, that small. Um, if I compare this next to, just to give you some context, that's the Apple TV remote, and that's how big it is. So obviously this, you can literally put it anywhere. It will, you can stick it on the back of your TV if you wanted to, whatever. Um, anywhere that you can get some, some actual power. And as I say, so once that's connected, essentially what it's doing is you're creating a, a sort of bridge in between your main router and your device, whichever device. As I say, I'm, I'm referring to the Apple TV in this particular video, but it can apply to any device. Now, the, the positives, obviously, like I say, is small. It's relatively cheap for £20 um, and it can install multiple open VPN clients. Um, so basically that is the actual servers that you use with your VPN. So basically you can install multiple profiles. So if you, with your particular VPN, you have more than one profile. Um, so for example, different servers in different countries or different regions, then you can install all of those and literally just switch them with a, a click of a button. Um, you do, basically I've set up everything using my iPhone, so it's, it's relatively simple. If you wanted to, you can even use this particular device as a normal router, so you can have a Wi-Fi uh, network emitting as well, but I probably wouldn't recommend it just for the simple fact that it's not very powerful, so using it in that way isn't probably going to be very beneficial. Now the biggest drawback that I found is the fact that the VPN clients that I've set up, and I've tested several now, um, and this is why I wanted to actually take my time between um, the initial setup and actually bringing you this video. And the biggest problem that I found with it was the speed of the, the VPN connections essentially. And this isn't to do with the actual VPN itself because I've tried several different ones. Um, I've tested them on my phone, so on my mobile phone through my normal uh, internet connection. And I'll probably get, on my phone, it probably varies between 40 and say 80 megabits per second. Uh, for context, my home broadband is 380 megabits per second. So if you take that as a comparison, so obviously it's dropping from 380 down to about 40 to 80 on my mobile phone. On my PC, I've tested the same VPN client and I get upwards of say 150. So obviously because that's hardwired, that's getting a much better connection. Now on the Fire TV stick that I've tested by once again installing the VPN client directly onto the Fire TV stick, I get up to say 40. Um, that's probably about the maximum I received on the Fire TV stick. That once again is using a wireless connection, not a wired connection. But on the Apple TV, and obviously this isn't uh, a problem with the Apple TV, this is a problem with, with the, the device itself in the way that it's, it's basically set up and uh, sending out the, the speed. It's, it's essentially this router. So the biggest issue that I actually found with this was down to the fact that the speed it gives you is only between say 10 and 15 megabits per second. Now for most people that might actually be enough and for most of the things that I've personally used it for it's also been enough. Um, however there will be some people out there that if you're and to give you some sort of an idea in terms of what that can be used for. So that speed is more than enough for streaming 720p. So any 720p content that you have, be it at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever, that, that will stream without a problem. 1080p is where you start to run into problems. Anything 1080p 60, so anything at 1080p with 60 frames per second, you're going to struggle to play that back. 4K, basically you're really struggling to play back any 4K content unless it's really compressed um, and not really that high of a bitrate. Essentially this, this is for people that maybe are getting geo-blocked or being blocked by their ISPs for things like IPTV. And most IPTV supplies out there will only be up to uh, 1080p. So they'll only be up to full HD. Um, so for most people out there, this is actually a very e simple solution in order to basically unlock that, that particular avenue and be able to use those services if your ISP is actually blocking you. But as I say, that is the one downside. Now, when you switch the VPN client off, the normal way it processes internet, 
So in order to get anything above 100, you, you need a gigabit ethernet port. This doesn't have a gigabit ethernet port. This only comes with fast ethernet. And because of that, um, basically you'll only ever get a maximum throughput of 100 megabits per second. That's if you're literally, nothing else is connected and it's, it's running peak performance. Um, that won't happen very often. It doesn't happen with any device, let alone like it's, it's not a restriction with this particular one. That's across the board. You, whenever it comes to um, sort of fast Ethernet ports, um, they'll never hit 100. 100 is their maximum. So um, why does that matter? So that matters for any content that you might have stored locally. Uh, such as um, iPhone recordings, things like that. So for me personally, obviously I have a NAS drive set up. So say for example, if I switch the VPN off, so it's back to my normal home internet, my, my home kit's working, I've got no conflicts there, but all of a sudden when I try and play back iPhone footage, which if I've recorded it using Filmic Pro, some of it could be up to 100 megabits per second that is not going to play back when you're using this that's why i actually have my apple tv hardwired in the first place because it enables me to play back virtually anything because it's getting that fast of a connection so that's the the two sort of um slight issues that i've i've found with it but when it comes to being a simple solution that is also portable so you can literally take this with you anywhere you need to go um even Basically, if you're going to a friend's relative, obviously nobody's really going out right now because of lockdown 2.0, but basically it enables you to use this anywhere, essentially in your setup without it being too much of a problem. You're not finding plugs to that you need to connect. You're literally one ethernet cable, um, one power cable, which can be any USB A connection out there. Um, and that's it, you're done, you're ready to go. Um, it comes with the Ethernet cable in the box. It comes with the power cable in the box. Um, it doesn't come with a plug because, like I said, you don't need one. Um, and basically, your VPN client, you can install. There's free ones out there. So what I'll do is I'll link down below um, in the description my personal uh, VPN that I use. Um, and I'll also link a free one that you can also use as well. The free one does have limitations where after a certain amount of... Uh, usage it will start to slow down but what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a separate video on VPNs and I'll go into more detail in that video essentially so that's that's about it in terms of this particular product from my testing so like I say I wanted to give it a good couple of weeks and actually test it in uh, in real world environment essentially where I can actually give a true perspective of what it's like to live with and for the most part, it worked perfectly for what I needed it to do. Obviously, for me personally, um, I've actually found a workaround because um, I now have the Fire TV stick set up on this TV as well. I have a Fire TV stick for every room now. So um, because of that, I don't actually need this anymore, but I'll still probably keep it around just as a fallback, just in case I want to ever actually use the Apple TV um, because of the software that that has on it. Um, for various various different apps but like I said um, I've tested it out for everything that um, I need it to do it would do and for anybody watching this video I'm guessing if you need a VPN set up on your Apple TV and you don't want to go down the route of paying hundreds of pounds for a router that supports a VPN then for 20 pounds this is basically the simplest solution um, that you will find and what I will do is, in uh, uh, to accompany this video, what I'll do is I'll do a second video give, telling you how to set everything up. So I'll give you instructions in terms of exactly how to plug it in, um, where you can plug it in, and also how to set up the VPN client. Um, and then I'll also do a separate video to that, um, giving you my, my um, preferred VPN that I actually use. Um, I don't use it all the time, but I do have one that I use every now and then. As I say, do st subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss out on any of those videos. And what I will do is I'll link them in the description below once they're live. Um, and then basically you can refer back to them uh, if you do have any issues. Mm -hmm.